So, what you have just seen I am presenting that now in a more more formal way ok. Our prediction equations y p going to be S x multiplied by x where S x is given over here ok which is same as what we had uh, uh, done earlier ok. Then we have S u pre which is given over here then you ha we have our capital S u and finally we have our capital S d ok. Uh, uh, so, these are all the matrices that we have built for handling the case of ideal case as well as measured disturbance case. Now, this is the issue ok. For example, if you look at the one of the assignments that uh, that you have and this is I am talking about the 2019 batch the assignment that that you have done is that G model was equal to 2.5 e to the power minus 7 s ok and the true system was 2.75 e to the power minus 6.2 s divided by 18.5 s plus 1 ok. So, now if you give a step let us say a step input of u step ok, your model will predict your output to be 2.5 multiplied by u step at steady state whereas your actual system is going to reach 2.75 multiplied by u step at steady state ok. So, if you blindly believe in the model and you do not do any type of a correction you are going to have that small amount of offset ok. In order to avoid having this offset we need to ensure that there is an inbuilt integrator into the overall system. How do we ensure that there is an inbuilt integrator? One is we realize that the model and the plant there is a mismatch. When there is a mismatch in the model and the plant we add the error E ok. How did we handle that particular error earlier? How did we handle that particular error earlier is by adding E over here. How did we do that in DMC? In DMC what did we do? Ok. In DMC algorithm we had this additional term in prediction equation which was nothing but E k E k and so on. What was this? This was just simply bias correction in DMC ok, which we had written that down as nothing but I p multiplied by E k. Now, why did that bias correction work ok? Remember what did we say when it came to our DMC algorithm? What we said when it came to our DMC algorithm is that we have our system Okay. Then we added our error, then we had our y. Basically means, what does it basically mean? Basically means that at steady state whatever error that you have you need to eliminate that error ok. What does this particular component that I have shown over there means? that it basically means that E k, E k plus 1, E k plus 2, E k plus 3 predicted at time k are all equal ok. This basically 
gives leads us to the, the idea of including the integrator and the idea of including the integrator is that we are presupposing that our next error is going to be equal to our previous error. We have this consistent bias that is present in the error. This is what we have done in DMC and for this um, deterministic state space MPC that is essentially what we are going to do as well. Okay. So, in order to ensure offset free tracking, I will use red color. and guarantee integral action ok. So, that is essentially what is required uh, in order to do offset free tracking ok. So, what are the options that are available for us? We have what we have said is we need to augment the model uh, so that it comes back into that same structure. Op option number 1 is to write zk as xk ek. If we write this we are going to have So, this is what, what our first option is going to look like ok. So, what do we need? We need x k plus 1 equal to a x k plus 0 multiplied by e k plus b multiplied by u k plus b d multiplied by d k ok. Let me raise this and bring this closer. Okay. Now, e k plus 1 is 0 multiplied by x k plus i multiplied by e k plus 0 multiplied by u k plus 0 multiplied by d k. Okay. What is y k going to be? y k is going to be c multiplied by x k plus i multiplied by e k. Okay. There is one more possibility that you can do that instead of making this i multiplied by e k you can also make this as let us say b e multiplied by e k and if you are using b e multiplied by e k this will just get replaced by b e ok. Both these options are available. There is no, re no particular reason that e needs to be i multiplied by e k where e is just a error between y and y measured and y predicted. It can be some constant b e multiplied by e k also. Now, what is the option number 2? Option number 2 is that we go to a differenced form. Now, how what do we mean by we go to a different form? When it, we, when we difference this, when we difference this, we are going to get delta x k plus 1 equal to a delta x plus b delta u. I am just skipping the k because I do not have space over here plus b d multiplied by delta d. Okay. Delta y k or let us say delta y k plus 1 is c multiplied by delta x k plus 1 plus e k plus 1 minus e k which is 0 ok and y k plus 1 is nothing but c multiplied by delta x k plus 1 which is a delta x plus b delta u plus b d delta d ok plus y k and this is what we can use in order to develop our equations over here 
So, we will have z k plus 1 is going to be equal to something multiplied by delta x k and y k So, z k plus 1 is nothing but C a multiplied by delta x k plus 0 multiplied by y k plus C b multiplied by sorry delta u k ok. We should have delta over here and C b d multiplied by delta d k ok. Y k plus 1 is nothing but C a multiplied by delta x k plus i multiplied by y k plus C b multiplied by delta u k plus C B D multiplied by delta D K. What is Y K going to be? 0 I multiplied by delta X K. Okay. So, this is what we are going to get. Okay. We can write these in this term. We can call the, this guy as phi gamma gamma D and chi ok. Same way for the other equation also. So, we are going to get z k plus 1 equal to phi z plus gamma u plus gamma d d or gamma delta u gamma d delta d and y k equal to chi z ok. Now, what are the things that one needs to be careful about? The things that one needs to be careful about is that it, it should have detectability that means uh, phi comma chi should be detectable ok and it should have it should have stabilizability that means phi comma gamma must be stabilizable as well ok. Now, the challenge over here is in this the challenge basically is in the fact that you have this integrator, but E is neither affected by u nor is it affected by d ok. The second thing is that you have your uh, x that is not affected by E also ok. So, what is required in order to guarantee the overall performance? What is required in order to guarantee the overall performance is that E should be somehow detectable from the uh, outputs that we get ok. That is if that is not met you are not going to get offset free tracking and this is one of the places where for example, that offset free tracking often fails. On the other hand the delta uh, x uh, formulation also uh, needs to ensure the same thing, but one of the advantages of the rate based formulation is that if C A is a detectable pair and if C A, A, A B is a stabilizable pair, then the overall formulation that we have is also detectable and stabilizable. So, that is the advantage that you have with option number 2. But whether you go with option number 1 or whether you go with option number 2, it needs to meet this detectability and stabilizability required ok. So, now the next question that we have to ask is can we do better? Well, the answer is people have looked at it and this we have realized that there is no reason why E should be an output disturbance model, E can very well be an input or a state disturbance model. If E is an input or a state disturbance model, we are going to get a different structure and that different structure just needs to be reflected as well ok. What do we what do we mean by that is that we have the various cases the output disturbance uh, model is going to be of the form x k plus 1 k x plus b u plus b d d y equal to c x plus e ok. 
or E1. Next one is the input disturbance model or a state disturbance model xk plus 1 equal to ax plus du plus ddd plus ek let us write e as de multiplied by say wk ok or ok and yk is cx and then we have a combined model which is going to be x k plus 1 equal to a x k plus d u k plus d d d k plus d e w k and y k is just c x k plus d e w k ok. So, this are the various three options irrespective of whether you take option number 1 or option number 2 those are the most popular one we need to ensure that these particular detectability and stabilizability conditions are met ok. So, while it might be very uh, encouraging or uh, tempting to add E in both the state as well as in uh, the out output disturbance one of the challenges is where do these w's come from or how do we determine what is the best way of adding those w's and second is whether these all these w's that you have added whether it is going to be uh, detectable and stabilizable or not ok. We need to add for each output that requires an integrator we need to add one w ok and for each w that is added we need that w that should be uh, observable through the measurement. So, the maximum number of w's that we can add is equal to the total number of measurements, the minimum number of w's that we should add is equal to the total number of controlled variables ok. So, with that I come to the end of this lecture. So far we have covered uh, uh, state space MPC for deterministic case. Next lecture I am going to recap uh, you know all that we have done so far and thereafter I am going to take the stochastic cases ok. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thanks and bye.